Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead. So today is the day that we finally fence in our garden area. So I picked up two rolls of welded wire fence. They're five foot tall rolls, 100 foot long, and uh, that ought to be really close to being able to fence this entire garden in today. So I just got done uh, putting in the bottom boards on this, this side over here. And I, there's a few top boards over there that I was missing. So that whole side's ready for fencing now. So three of the sides are completely ready to hang this fence. Now the very back side, um, the farthest side back there, I want to be able to leave access for a tractor. Or make it easier that I can get a tractor in. Let's put it that way. So we're going to step back, maybe do something different on that side. But let's go ahead and start hanging uh, this welded wire fence on these three sides. Um, now one thing you're going to notice, this does step down the hill. So I'm probably going to end up cutting several small pieces of this fencing to put on each section as I step it down the hill. So there's going to be a lot of cutting. i am also got a pneumatic stapler. I've got my air compressor out here. And the pneumatic stapler does not have galvanized staples. They are not an outdoor staple. And it's going to allow me to staple this fence on and get it hung quickly but they're not a permanent staple. They'll rust and they'll fall apart. So I've got to come back and put heavy duty staples in afterwards and just to secure it in place. But the pneumatic stapler is just to allow me to hang this quicker working by myself. So let's go ahead and get started. We just got done with the first side of the fence and looking down at it, it looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out in fact it's a lot easier just cutting those eight foot sections of fence and handling those if you're by yourself a lot easier than trying to do a long section so if you I'm sure you've noticed the, the hoop house back here and how it's all torn up this is because of the dogs so the dogs got in here this just happened last night the hoops were actually opened 
Um, so they were able to crawl through the bed and get inside the hoop and scratch at it from the underneath side. And they pretty much just shredded it. So another reason why I got to get this, you know, I've got to get this fence stand to keep these dogs from just tearing everything up. So very, very uh, disappointed last night when they tore this up. Luckily, it's getting warm enough now where, um, where I don't probably need the hoop houses anymore and I can go ahead and take them off. But uh, to use this again next year, I'll have to put new plastic on them. So let's go ahead and see if we can keep fencing. This is going pretty quick. We'll get the rest of this side done and we'll move to the next. Okay, you ready? So just finished hanging that second roll of fence and we had enough fence to, to fence in the entire garden except for this opening and that opening right there. So on this back side, this far side of the garden, we did end up putting more boards along the bottom because that gave me something to staple the fence to at the bottom. It makes it just way more secure having something at the all four sides to staple to. Now those, those openings right there is where I thought I could get a tractor through. I borrowed my dad's tractor. It's a compact tractor. He has a tiller, I don't. And his tractor would fit through these eight foot openings. No problem to get in there and till. But I've had a lot of people suggest that I put a double gate on there. So I'd have two doors that would open up and I'd have a really big opening. In my case, I'd have a 16 foot opening there to be able to get in and maneuver around and, and till that area and that is the right answer that is what I should do but I don't have the material here today to build gates and include it in this video what I want to do is I want to get this garden planted as quick as possible so that uh, so that I can at least get my my plants started and in the garden growing so we'll come back in a later video we'll build these gates here on the back there'll be some pretty big doors to build and then we've got a couple side gates to build also. 
But what I'm going to do is it's getting late today. I'm going to come back tomorrow morning. We're going to come up with some way to cover this opening, make it secure so none of the wildlife or the dogs could get in the garden area. So when I got up this morning to let the animals out, I ended up looking to see what I had on hand that I could cover these openings with. And I found this, this fencing. This is some kind of a garden fencing. It's a welded wire fence and it's got that little green coating on there. So it's pretty cheap fence. The wire on the inside is pretty thin. It bends real easy. Um, but it should work to cover this opening up and to keep the dogs and the wildlife out and until I can come back and build a big double door opening for the tractors. So to hang this on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use screws with some big washers and uh, try to you know place those in the corners and tighten the fence down that way. It'll make it a lot easier to remove later when we build our gates. So let's go ahead, start rolling this out and uh, get this covered up. Got a stack of washers on this screw. Because of course I don't have the right, I don't have any fender washers. So on this side over here, I'm gonna put my screw in at an angle. And that should help pull the fence tight. There it is. Now my fence is too high. So I need to lower it down. So now that I've got this gate opening covered up, that should keep the dogs out. Let's go ahead, we'll take a closer look at this fence and see how it looks. So as we look down the side of this fence, the fencing on there looks really straight. I mean, it doesn't look bad at all. It looks pretty good. So that stapler worked out fantastic, actually. Um, so I put a staple almost every eight inches and that really helped flatten that fence down. You know, you could kind of stretch it anywhere that wanted to raise up, maybe, uh, you know, be raised a little bit. If you hit it with that staple gun, it flattens right down. And I did a really good job, but you have to put the staples fairly, you know, fairly close together. And uh, these not being galvanized, I know they're not gonna last. And I really don't wanna go back and put a thousand staples in by hand. So I am going to look for staples that will fit that gun. So as these staples go bad, um, I can just come back here and put galvanized staples in. I'm going to see what I can find. Hopefully I can find some galvanized that fit in that gun. So one of the other issues I had is when I cut these posts off, um, some of them didn't end up having a board to nail to at the bottom. You see that? So I'm going to have to come back in here and put another board on there because this is too flimsy. An animal could push their way through that um, and get in. So I'm gonna have to add a board on top of here in this location to have something to staple the bottom of that fence to. And I had that happen in this location. I had it happen in three spots. So where I was measuring, my measurement was just a little bit off when I cut those posts off. So I need Definitely something. This one's probably, I mean, you could, something could probably squeeze through there if they wanted to. So, other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with the way this all turned out. I mean, it does stair step down. Everything doesn't match nice and neat. So, I mean, it's not like this line goes across and neatly matches that line. But, I mean, everything's kind of cut at a random height here. So, but overall, I think it worked out fairly well. And, uh, yeah, I think this side over here, I mean, it stair steps down pretty evenly the whole way. And 
think that looks pretty good. So once again on this side, everything looks fairly straight. And uh, I mean the fence doesn't look saggy or nothing like that. It looks like it's nice and taut. I do like the way this turned out. So one thing I'll mention, if you're using a stapler like this, you will get staples that hit the fencing and they'll mangle up and they may come out at a weird direction, kind of back at you. So you don't want your fingers within the length of that staple. So you want to keep your fingers back and then pieces of those staples will fly off. So that right there's another one that's a little bit mangled. But uh, I had a piece come back and hit me in the knuckle. And then I had a piece come back and hit me in between the eyes. So you definitely got to hit or, you know, keep on your safety glasses and keep your gloves on. I just have the tendency to forget to put them back on. But definitely need to wear safety glasses and gloves when doing this. So I ended up with about seven feet of this fencing left over. So of course that's not enough to cover up one of these eight foot sections here. But I think it'll be enough that I can use them on our garden gates. So we've got two smaller walk-in entrances. Uh, they're going to be about a three foot wide door. And if I use this fencing on those doors when I build them, it'll make them kind of match the garden and they'll blend in and they'll just it'll just look a lot better, I think. So I'm pretty happy with the way this fence ended up turning out. Um, everything is really nice and flat and it looks good. And I'm going to say that's all because of that stapler. Being able to come across here and staple that like every eight inches just kept it nice and flat. And if you had like a raised spot, like a, a bend in the wire that wanted to come up, you could just hit that with the stapler and flatten your fence down. And you could just keep it flat as you went along and, and worked the fence. So, yeah, I think it all has to do to the pneumatic stapler. Definitely, if I was going to do this again, I would probably done a harder search for galvanized staples. And uh, I'm definitely going to be searching for some for that gun. But uh, I think the garden now is fairly secure. I can probably just put something up over the doors and nothing will be able to get in for the time being. So I'm going to go ahead and start planting plants next. I've got to get our landscape fabric out here, get it all over the ground, you know, covering the whole garden. And then we're going to start putting our plants in the ground. But overall, I think this looks pretty good. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.